Hey guys, welcome back to the Hash Raptor YouTube channel. Hope you guys are doing great. In this video, I am working on rebuilding this Rogue One mining rig. And if you've watched the channel from the start, you'll know that this started out as a 3060 Ti rig, non-LHR. This was before LHR came out. And we built it with this awesome parallel miner breakout board, which supports really all the power connections you're gonna need from fans, motherboard, you can do that all on this one board and all on this HP server power supply right here. You don't need an ATX power supply, which is awesome. So this thing has been up and running, been doing great. And then within the past couple of weeks, it went down and it was consistently going down more and more frequently. So I came out here, I did some troubleshooting. Uh, all the risers look good. Power was my first suspicion. So I actually swapped out an HP server power supply and everything still it didn't quite look right. So I was thinking possibly it was the hard drive because I was using a USB drive um, and Hive OS to operate the rig. So I went in and I got a brand new, I ordered some new SSD drives uh, just because it's faster all around when you're doing updates on your Hive rig if you have to flash it. It's just, I'm getting away from USB altogether now and going all SSD. So I put a brand new SSD drive on there just to see if that was it. And nope, it did not fix it. So that's when I tried connecting up a monitor to see what was happening locally on the rig. And I could not get monitor out, no output. So that's when I decided that it had to be an issue with the motherboard. Uh, so what I did is I went inside and you may notice this Zotac motherboard is from the studio. And this is the motherboard I use on my test studio mining rig. Well, motherboards aren't easy to come by these days. So I yanked this because it was a known good working motherboard, came out here just now and replaced it. I plugged in one 3060 TI on here, this first one right here, and fire it up, and sure enough, it is working. I got it to boot, it shows up in Hive, it wouldn't even do that before. So, good news is, is it appears to have been the motherboard. The bad news is, is now I've got to uh, go in and troubleshoot that motherboard and see if I can reuse the processor RAM, see what's going on with that. But here, in this video, what I wanna do is I wanna continue uh, straightening all this up, I want to get these 3070s. I've got some 3070s on here. I want to get them out of this rig and I want to make this strictly a 3060 Ti rig. Then what I'm going to do is uh, I've got some new cards and I want to take the 3070s that I've had and I want to take the new cards, build a brand new rig with those. So we'll do that in an upcoming video. And then I also in an upcoming video want to do an LHR only rig. Uh, but again, we'll cover that in an upcoming video. For now, what I need to do is get these cards out of here and I want to get my Founders Edition 3060 Ti, get it put in here, get this thing back up and running and see what kind of hash rate we can get it to. And that should put us around, I think we'll have five 3060 Ti's uh, that we can get up and mining on and we should be hashing away by the end of the video. So let me jump right in, let me get these moved over and I'll be right back. All right, so I've got both of the 3070's out. You can see right here, these were the Gigabyte Aorus 3070s. Really cool cards. They've been running great since I picked them up. Got them at when they first launched, actually. And again, these are the non-LHR cards right here. And this will be part of the foundation for a 3070 rig we'll do in an upcoming video. So now I've got to get the 3060 Ti that's going to fill this spot. I've got another Founders Edition card that I'm going to grab. And we're going to bring that over here. And I think what I'm going to do with this spacing is leave these here, leave a gap in the middle, and then do the two Founders Editions on the outside just to spread this out, create you know a little airflow here in the middle of the rig. And I think I'm also going to leave a hot spare riser down here in case anything happens with the rig. Uh, I can just really quickly troubleshoot and move a card over. And then the other reason for that is, is if I'm able to pick up 
that next 3060 Ti Founders Edition card here anytime soon. I'll be able to just drop it right in place and then we'll be up and running with our six card 3060 Ti rig. All right, so here's the card we're grabbing, our Founders Edition 3060 Ti off of the Solo mining rig. This one's gonna get reworked all together as well. But for now, let's grab this 3060 Ti and get it moved over. All right, there we go. We've got our NVIDIA 3060 Ti Founders Edition card in here. So we've got two matches sitting side by side. We've got the Zotac 3060 Ti and two EVGA 3060 Ti's. Now I did set this in maintenance mode before I took it down so that when I bring it back up, we can get all the settings right since we're taking 3070s out of here. But they were all running pretty close to one another, so no big major concerns. One of the nice things was that I'm going to be able to free up some power cables here because these 3070s used dual 8-pin down here for power, and these 3060 Ti's only use a single 8-pin or 8-pin to 12-pin over here except for these EVGA cards with the triple fans. They do use dual 8-pin up here. One thing I did forget to mention was the USB connections into the motherboard here. So I do have to get all of that reconnected for the additional GPUs, but on this Zotac motherboard, I don't know the order. A lot of folks don't care. I kind of do just because I'm OCD as to which slot equates to which GPU. If anyone happens to know that on this Zotac board, please let me know put that in the comments I would love to find out so what I'm gonna do is just plug these in in the order that they are lined up up here and then when we get over to Hive we'll see what order the BIOS assigns to each card and then what order it shows up in Hive OS and if it's close enough we'll run with that if not I may have to come out here and reorganize some of these ports to get this showing up maybe try to get like models side by side but I don't know we'll see how it goes Okay, so here we go. Everything is connected, and basically I just went in order, uh, one right after another, in the order that I have them set up across the top right here. So let's get this thing powered on. See if I forgot anything. You can see on the parallel minor board, we got all three lights. The 12 volt, the DC, and the PC light. So... Let's see here, lights on all these cards, fans spinning. All right, so I decided while I was standing here just to fire up my phone real quick and see how the rig was doing uh, as far as the boot order goes. And you can see right here, I, I, it looks like I got lucky. Uh, the two EVGAs are partnered up, then the Zotac in the middle, and then both of the NVIDIA Founders Edition cards. So from an order standpoint, looking good. Now that I know, that I've got it looking the way I want. Uh, for my OCD standpoint, I'll move over to the desktop and we'll try to get the rest of this set up and configured. All right, so here we are back over at the desktop and you can see the farm right here all up except Rogue One. And you can see right here that we've got it in maintenance mode. This is what it looks like when you do that if you're not familiar with that. And then notice right here, it's got a red missing GPU item right here and as you guys know we we're actually not missing one anymore we are planned to only have five so if you don't know how to fix that we'll jump in here and I'll show you how to do that just uh, so that you're not worried about a GPU not being recognized or thinking there's an error when you reboot so to fix that again as you can see we only have five GPUs I'm just gonna come over here to settings and if you scroll down a bit in settings, you will see cards, boards, quantity. So if I just change this from six to five, hit the update button uh, when we go back out here in just a second. Once we see that this has been applied, we should see only five GPUs and all green. All right, here I am back at the farm view. You can see that that was applied and we no longer have the red box here anymore. So let's get in here and let's get this configured so we can get it out of maintenance mode and get it mining. All right, guys, so we are back, and let me just go over all the final settings here for you real quick. We got all of our GPUs up over 62 mega hash. You can see we've got 68 accepted shares at 100%. I'm going to leave this running for about 24 to 48 hours. I'm pretty happy with this result. I mean, I could keep tweaking a little bit. I did play around with absolute core clocks, and I didn't get much out of it. And actually, a couple of these cards I dropped a bit. So the results are looking so good for this uh for this 3060 Ti rig here that um, if this is stable, this is probably what I'm gonna keep 
right here. So we're going to try to keep this stable over the next 48 hours. And in total, so each card's at 130 watts right here. And if you add about 15 watts per riser at the wall, plus about 50 watts for the motherboard and power supply, this, you can see this adjusted total right here is the total power for the entire rig, including all of that all in. And I made the adjustments in the settings for the rig. So we're at about 780 watts at the wall. Now there's the potential, especially on these NVIDIA cards, for me to drop this down to 120, 125, but we'll play with that in a couple days. Uh, the driver's NVIDIA 460.91.03, and you can see that there is an update available here, which once I, um, again, confirm that the rig is stable, then I'll do updates and that sort of thing. All right, so I went ahead and dropped in our Ethereum settings here for Rogue One. We're at 310 mega hash at 780 watts. And on Ethereum, still our best bet at $12.65 after electric total right here and $14.53 if you're not paying your electric bill monthly and if you're hodling those coins. Now, I will say I have already paid off all of these cards with the farm so I don't have an ROI that I have to do. I've fully paid all of them off uh, and all of the parts. But if you're looking at 3060 TIs and you're able to get some non-LHR cards, you could calculate the total cost of the cards that you're looking at and then use this right here as your daily. Do a little math and you'll figure out what your ROI is going to be. So I hope that helps, guys. I hope you enjoyed watching this video. We'll see you in the next one. Take care. As long as we have our backs, we never our faults combine. This time we will win. This time we'll have to join forces. This time we will win. This time we'll have to join forces.